Whether or not you like modern Rolex, you can't deny that the brand has produced some of the most recognizable and consequential watch designs of all time, like the GMT Master. However, opinions vary on which of Rolex's current sports models is the greatest. Welcome to the luxury world. Get inspired with us today and tomorrow. After careful thought and evaluation of all the existing Rolex timepieces in the market, the luxury world will take on a detailed view on the GMT Master 2. In this video, there will be four different reasons discussing why the GMT Master is probably the best modern Rolex watch. As usual, before proceeding, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our latest videos. The original non-numerical Rolex GMT Master practically set the standard for dual time zone clocks for the past 50 years, making the Rolex GMT Master II one of the most sought-after luxury travel watches in the world. There's no denying that GMT Master's unparalleled pedigree and legacy is the best starting point here, or let's say the foremost reason why this particular Rolex watch is the best among the rest. Although the Glycine Airman released in 1953 was the first watch to include a 24-hour rotating bezel, it was Rolex that popularized the concept and led to the development of what is now known as the GMT Hand. As the story behind this was narrated by various media outlets, in the early days of transcontinental business travel when Pan American Airlines pilots needed a watch that could keep track of multiple time zones, the original GMT Master was developed in response to their need. The watch was an instant hit with professional and military pilots, as well as special operation forces and anyone else who needed a sports watch with dual time zone functionality. While the original GMT Master's hour hand could not be independently set, with the local hour hand tied to the hour and minute hands, the GMT Master II introduced in 1982 allowed for an independently adjustable local hour hand that exemplifies what we now know as the true GMT and its functionality. With the addition of a rotating bezel, the GMT Master II was and is capable of tracking three different time zones simultaneously. Since it was first made, the red and blue bezel which has come to be known as the Pepsi bezel has become a symbol of this model family. It has been worn by celebrities, heads of state, and other important and interesting people in the sports world. When it comes to cultural significance and effect on the business, no one comes close to the GMT master. For the second point, Despite the fact that many other Rolex models, such as the Daytona Submariner and notably the Sea Dweller have diverged from their historical forebears in reference to the past, particularly the reference 6542, the GMT Master II on the other hand has maintained a remarkably constant depiction of its core design format across the decades. Looking at the modern GMT Master II dial, we see a black surface with basic weave geometric indices that are the same forms. There is also a Mercedes handset with an extra red GMT hand, almost the same dial text and a simple date window. The Pepsi bezel recognizable by its Cyclops magnifier has been updated to look great in bicolor ceramic while retaining the same classic colors and design elements as the predecessor. While not pursuing the same path as others, this has led to a greater emphasis on blinks at the expense of tradition. Moving on to the next reason, Surely, we know a lot about proportions and fit. The GMT Master II wears like the original vintage measurements, or at least extremely near, measuring 40 mm in diameter, 11.9 mm in thickness, and 48 mm from lug to lug. This surely strengthens point two as a significant factor for the watch's sensation of not forgetting the past. The Pepsi bezel adds a splash of color to an already eye-catching design, and the watch's proportions are nearly ideal, making it easy to see while still managing to avoid appearing cumbersome or imposing while worn. Furthermore, Rolex's sophisticated luxury aesthetic is evident in the finishing, which features vertical brushing on the case tops contrasted by polishing on the vertical case sides and sculpted crown guards, a feature originally introduced to the GMT Master family with the legendary 1675 in 1959. The crown that sits in between those guards is of the Trilock variety, which is a type of crown that is frequently used in the brand's more aquatically focused pieces, such as the Submariner. 
This type of crown has some of the best threadings that you're going to find in the industry. For a crown that once screwed in feels locked tight and provides 100 meters of water resistance all at the same time. Collectors of the GMT Master 2 are often divided over which bracelet style is better, the Jubilee or the Oyster. However, for the Pepsi, there's no question that the Jubilee simply feels right on this model, fitting snugly between the 20mm lugs. The Jubilee was first introduced in the 1940s, and it features a 5-length design with polished, shorter center lengths, and brushed semicircular outer links. Nevertheless, the GMT Master 2 has a lengthy history of presenting a Jubilee on a few references during the mid-20th century, and it has just been reintroduced to the newest generation in steel in the year 2018, despite the fact that many people associate the bracelet with the Datejust. This bracelet is extremely pleasant to wear due to its design and smaller stature of the individual links. It's also possibly the most breathable steel bracelet you will discover all while making the watch appear to be smaller on the wrist. Rolex bracelets, including early Jubilee models, were notoriously stretchy due to their hollow end links at the lugs, folded lengths, and simple folded clasps. However, the new Jubilee is solid from end to end, with a width that tapers from 20mm to 18mm, and an absolutely fantastic milled clasp at its end. The clasp isn't as convenient as the glide lock system on the fly adjustments, but it still feels high end. It has three micro adjustable points on the inside that can be adjusted with a spring bar tool, and it also has a tool free folding extension that adds around 5mm to its length. Lastly, the most important reason why the Rolex GMT Master is the top pick as the best modern Rolex is that unlike other Rolex models such as the Submariner and the Daytona, it has no actual equivalent in the category it defines. This is because there is a comprehensive list of competitors as well as other models that have contributed equally to, if not more so, than the watch type which they represent. Take the Submariner as an example. It's probably the most famous watch ever, but there are plenty of other watches that are just as good. There are other options, like the Omega Seamaster 300 or Diver 300 Planet Ocean, the Breitling Super Ocean, the Tudor Black Bay, the Glasshütte Original CQ, or the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. The Blancpain 50 Fathoms actually beat Rolex to the punch when it came to defining many of what are now considered standard features of a dive watch. As packed as the Daytona's El Primero has been over for a decade, the Breitling Navi Timer and Zenit El Primero chronographs are just as popular. Moreover, with its fixed tachometer bezel and the overused yet immovable aura that comes with contributions to the Apollo program, the Omega Speedmaster, a watch that predates the Daytona being introduced in 1957, surely contributed to the contemporary design we now anticipate from chronographs. The Explorer is the only other Rolex watch that comes close to defining the look of a watch genre, but even so, numerous other brands give the aesthetic justice. In the case of the GMT Master 2, there are no other luxury sports GMT options that even come close to being as defining of a style or type of complications as this one is. Surely the market is flooded with excellent GMT watches, we get that. There's Omega Planet Ocean GMTs, Grand Seiko's offers, Glycine Airman, and even Longines. But let's face it, Rolex has this sort of bicolored 24-hour bezel with an extra GMT hand in the stack, and it's not even near to needing one last point to bring this argument home. To exercise the validity of this claim, I'll give you a second to think. Then I want you to close your eyes, and when I say the type of complication, name the first watch that comes to mind. While the Submariner is probably the first to come to mind, the watch landscape is vast, especially at the entry-level end, where there are plenty of good options. Now, keep your eyes closed and think about a chronograph for a while. There are many possible answers here, including the Speedmaster Daytona and many others. One more time, close your eyes and tell me which watch comes to mind when you hear the word GMT. There may be a few dissenters who claim that other watches came to mind, but I'm willing to bet that for the vast majority of people, the answer is the Rolex GMT Master.
And those are so far the reasons for the claim that GMT Master 2 is the best modern Rolex timepiece. Which point was convincing enough to lead you in agreement with this claim? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment below. Also, please share, like, and subscribe to this video. This is Luxury World, and we'll see you next time.